Today we're going to be talking about Section 8 investing and why I love it! This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks, the show where I help investors like you invest in real estate. Investors like Chris from California. Chris, I am helping build you a rental portfolio, right? You got a bunch of cash. You got like 300 Gs. You're looking to put it to use. And I think one of the best ways to put money to use is with Section 8 rentals. I love Section 8. It has made me a boatload of money. I have a property for you today that is going to be great for the Section 8 program. So not only are we going to go over that specific property, the pros, the cons, what's going on with that deal, we're also going to talk Section 8 strategy and why I love it right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. We are going to get into the details on this Section 8 rental, dude. I dig this one uh, quite a bit because it's got like a value add component too, but it's not going to necessarily have to be like a rehab, okay? 816 West 22nd Lorraine, 44052. Priced at sixty six grand, which is very attractive. Six days on the market. This is like a value add opportunity, and this is beautiful Section Eight money right here, folks. But there's not Section Eight money coming in today, and that's why we're going to get some some value add opportunity here, right? This is a big old house, and it's in pretty good shape, right? We got a tenant already in there. They're living there. They're doing their thing. Okay, it's a little dated, but it's already making some coin. But here's what we got going on, okay? We have this tenant in there. I wrote this down. They're paying six and a quarter, right? Regular month to month cash tenant paying six and a quarter. This is not a six and a quarter rental. No, 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 no. No, this is a beautiful Section 8 cash flow monster, cash flow machine, cash flow. I don't know. It's going to make a lot of cash, though, when you put the Section 8 tenants in there. Why? Because Section 8 tenants will be paying $1,050, $1,050, okay? $12,600 a year. And then you run your fixed variable expense uh, estimates, things of that nature. You're looking to clear over 500 bucks a month, folks, right? Now, here's where the value add comes into play, okay? If you give me this property... What a 1050 Section 8 tenant in it. I'm selling it for 80 grand on the investment properties for sale show in this neighborhood, right? 80 grand all day. Okay, maybe even 85. They are asking only 66 because we currently have a tenant and they're paying six and a quarter. So that makes it not that attractive to investors. Some investors who don't know, who are not in the know, might not know what's happening, might think that this is actually what the market rent is, right? No, no, no. 1050, right? We got to get Section 8 in there eventually. Now, here's why I consider Section 8 the cheat code to low income investing. When you're investing in lower income neighborhoods, the biggest issue you run into, the biggest hurdle you run into is finding tenants to pay rent all the time. Okay? Sometimes they run into situations in their lives and, you know, they're not prepared for it, right? The car breaks down, they don't go to work, they lose their job. Uh, they freaking blew the money on, uh, I don't know, freaking new shoes or something. Like, they just, they, 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 when something bad in their lives happens, they don't have savings, and frequently they think, you know, not paying rent is an option. I'm, I shouldn't say frequently. It doesn't happen all the time. But I'm just saying, like, more frequently than in non-low-income neighborhoods. That's just the nature of investing in real estate, right? And the more risky a neighborhood is, right, the more risky you run into non-pay. Okay, so my opinion on the whole matter is Section 8 alleviates so much of that problem, right? Because you eliminate that, right? Oh, you something happened, unexpected circumstance, you can't pay rent. Not when the government's paying it, folks. When the government's paying it, it comes in all the time. So that's our end game, right? But 
what we have here. We already have a long-term tenant who pays. They don't pay enough, but they already pay. They've proven to be a consistent payer, and that's the issue, right? Sometimes you're going to find tenants, you think they'll be consistent payers, and then they're not. This one already is. So we don't want to just, like, immediately remove this tenant. That would be crazy. That would be stupid because you got to rehab the inside of the unit. It was dated to get 1050. you got to cosmetically upgrade it, right? Somebody's not going to move in to that dated looking thing as it is you probably got to spend five ten grand to upgrade it we don't want to do that no 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 we want to keep that person in there as long as they keep paying right so i would probably renew their lease right maybe bump them up to like 750 because that's still way cheaper than it should be and then after that go up like 25 bucks a year hopefully we get them up to around a thousand or so before they move out then when they move out then we bring in that section eight right here's the thing you can't look at every single rental property's tenant as if the tenant will always be there. The tenants are important, but not on an individual basis, right? Tenants are important to your investments. Without tenants, you don't get rent, okay? But an individual tenant is fairly irrelevant to you as an investor. This individual tenant already pays. That's great. Let's ride that out as long as we can. That's a bonus. But the fact that this individual tenant is going to be paying lower than what your market tenants, your tenant base should and would be paying is what doesn't really matter, right? Collecting a little bit of less rent for a short period of time is irrelevant. Likewise, if you were to buy a property and one specific tenant happened to be paying more than what the market rent is, that doesn't make that house more valuable. That's just a small moment in time that's relatively irrelevant when you look at your investment over the long haul. So you got to focus on the market rents. So, with all that said, should be an above 80K property, 80, 85, 77, somewhere in there, right? Okay? If you already have the Section 8 tenants in there, more buyers don't focus on the fact that we got to focus on the long term. They do see that rent and they do their immediate price to rent ratio thing. So that's going to help us. But it's still, in reality, that's really what it's worth, right? So that's our value add here, right? So they're asking 66. I say we push it a little bit further, even harder, because a lot of investors don't look at the long term. I say we try to pick it up at 62. If we pick it up at 62, we're looking at a $15,000 down payment. Bank kinks in 46. And assuming you were able to get that current tenant all the way up to market rent over a course of a few years, you're looking at a long term cash on cash projection of 17 percent that is why section 8 properties are amazing right you can kick off a 17 percent return with relative consistency because the big thing is like 17 percent that's great but what if i really don't get my rent when you go section 8 for the long haul you're almost guaranteeing you're gonna get that rent Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.